Welcome to the Breakfast Leadership Show, where we interview global thought leaders on business, leadership, and life. Here's your host, keynote speaker, best-selling author, and chief burnout officer of the Breakfast Leadership Network, Michael Levitt. Welcome back. I've got Kevin Ring online. Kevin, how are you? Hey, I'm doing really well, Michael. It's uh, good to talk to you today. Good to talk with you. Really looking forward to this conversation for a bit now because you are in a very interesting field. So why don't you share a little bit about you and then we'll dive into the conversation. Yeah. So I'm with the Institute of Work Comp Professionals. We are based in Asheville, North Carolina, and our primary business is actually working with insurance agents to help them understand how workers' compensation works so that they can help their clients have better results. And of course, today we're uh, we're talking to employers about how they can you know better manage their workers' compensation. Yeah, it's important work. And a lot of people, I think, when they hear the word workers' compensation or workers' comp, they think about injuries. It's like, oh, I hurt my back at work and now I'm I'm on workers' comp or, you know, whatever, things like that. But it's obviously much, much more for that. So why don't you share briefly, you know, just, you know, a good definition for what workers' compensation means to you so, you know, my audience can, you know, get a little bit, you know, better understanding of of what what it's all about and why it's such an important component to their business. Well, absolutely. I mean, it's it's an important component to your business because if we go back to, Before the first workers' compensation law was passed, which was in 1911 in Wisconsin, if one of your employees got hurt, they were pretty much on their own. If they wanted you as the employer to chip in for that, then they had to sue you. And that obviously gave employers a a big leg up because they typically have more money to defend a lawsuit than, than folks have to sue. And so this this grand compromise, as it's often referred to, was created where the employer essentially accepts responsibility for all accidents at, that happen in the course and scope of someone's employment in exchange for dramatically limiting their liability. And so it's important to your business, and I, I like to remind folks of this sometimes, even when things go wrong in workers' compensation that the alternative to not having workers' compensation is is a dramatically worse situation, especially considering it's not as though the legal environment has gotten better in the 115 years or so since uh, since these laws started to crop up. And then the other piece is that you know, workers' comp is often ignored both by agents and employers because the wording of the policy is is the same. No matter who you buy your insurance from, it's mandated by the state. And so people tend to just kind of kick the desk and write the check and and move on. But the reality is that workers' compensation is the one insurance premium over which you have the greatest amount of control over what you pay. There are certainly components of it that you can't control, but but how you set up your program and then how you deal with preventing injuries. And then like you were saying, dealing with employees when they get injured, you know, those choices that you make in your business can have a dramatic impact on what you pay in future years. Well, it's so important to you know, recognize. And I love how you mentioned that where it is one, one of the premiums that you do have a lot of control over. And what are some common things you see businesses miss uh, when they when they have a workers comp policy and you know they've got it set up and they basically just accepted the, the generic terms of everything and didn't you know look at any any opportunities to be more efficient in it yeah absolutely so the the first thing and the foundational element of a workers compensation policy are the classifications that are applied to your policy. So in most states, with the notable exception of Pennsylvania and Delaware, there are between five and 600 different codes that the insurance companies can use to describe your business. And that's a lot, but there's even more different types of businesses. So the first thing is working with your insurance agent to make sure that the classifications applied to your policy 
are correct because those classifications determine the rates that you're going to pay on different parts of your payroll and and in certain situations may even impact who out in the insurance world would be willing to to write your insurance what insurance companies are out there because if you if you're classified in something that's dramatically more hazardous than what you really do then you know that's not necessarily attractive to every insurance company and for the most part what a, what employers see is a five or six word title of the classification but when you look into the resources where these codes are published in a lot of cases they're multiple pages spelling out very specifically you know a business that fits in this code does a b and c potentially using these materials or these tools and and businesses that do these other things are are classified in a different way. It's a difficult thing for an employer to navigate on their own, but it's an important question to ask your agent. Then the other thing that I would probably start with is your workers' compensation premium audit. So workers' compensation is relatively unique in that the the premium when your agent comes to you and says your premium next year is going to be x number of dollars that value is based on the your estimate of what your payroll is going to be over the next 12 months that that policy is effective then the insurance company is responsible for coming back at the end of the policy and you know essentially checking your books to see did you have more or less payroll. That seems like a very simple question to answer, but just as there are, you know, many things that you or many ways you might compensate your employees that perhaps you don't pay taxes on, there are also a good number of items that money or substitute for money you might give your employees uh, that you don't pay workers compensation on. So a simple one is outside of Pennsylvania and Delaware where this rule does not exist. The premium portion of overtime pay, you do not pay workers' compensation on. So if I make $10 an hour, I work over 40 hours a week, now I'm making time and a half. That extra $5 in my $15 an hour wage uh, should be excluded from the workers' compensation, but the employer has to keep those records and then give them to, to the premium auditor to, to be able to exclude that money. On the other hand, bonuses are included, which often frustrates employers because they're trying to be nice at the end of the year. But bonuses are included because if bonuses could be excluded, then a business owner might choose to pay all their employees minimum wage and then say, every Friday is bonus day. Congratulations, you know, in order to to try and and not not pay as much, you know. Another thing that often gets employers in trouble is poor record keeping on expense reimbursements because expense reimbursements can be excluded. But if you don't have records to back up those expense reimbursements, the you know default option for the premium auditor is to include that as payroll because you don't have any evidence that it was a legitimate business expense. And it's really all about keeping the records when it comes to the premium audit. There's, depending on the state, between you know 15 and 18 different types of money or substitutes for money that you might give your employees that isn't to be included on the premium audit. And so what we would recommend is that you you visit with your insurance agent, and if they don't have answers to your questions, you might want to shop for a different insurance agent who can help you more effectively about what items are excluded in your state, because there are variables from state to state, so that you can keep those records. And when the premium auditor arrives, whether it's physically in person, over Zoom, a lot of businesses do their premium audit just through the mail. But regardless of how the premium audit happens, if you have those records and you can give those to the premium auditor, then you should wind up paying just exactly what you owe because the rules of the system are built so that when a mistake is made, that mistake almost always results in the insurance company collecting more than they should rather than you as the business owner paying less. Yeah, that's uh, 
Yeah, you know, what people say, well, it's time consuming, but the more accurate your records, the better you are off in not only insurance situations, but taxation as well. And that's why, you know, working with a good combination of accounting and insurance and tax and all the advisors, it's so important because you'll you'll save money, you'll do things on the up and up, and it allows you to get fine tuned because you know organizations okay it's classified as this but if your employees if a third of your employees are doing something that's in another classification that's similar it it, it's you know it's obviously a big deal because you one you want to make sure you're classifying your employees right because of one you know it's the right thing to do but two for potential claims because if there's an injury on something like why were they doing that they were you know, classified as doing this. Why were they on a ladder? That's not their classification, you know, kind of thing. I've seen that, you know, in, in work situations before. Cause I used to work in healthcare and there were certain things like, oh, they got injured, but they're doing something that they shouldn't have been doing. What in the world's going on here? And, you know, ran into some issues with that. And, right. and the avoid- good news in that kind of situation is that that should not put the insurance company in a position where they would be allowed to refuse to pay for the injury, right? So they, the the system is built to pay by default, I would say. But it absolutely can get you in hot water with the insurance company. You know, the best case scenario is that, you know, come premium audit time, they're going to look much more closely at what your employees are doing and potentially, you know, reallocate that payroll. And listen, especially in small businesses, and and we are a small business, so I I embody this every day. You know, it's you know people do a little bit of everything. You know, it's a, when it's an all hands on deck situation, it's an all hands on deck situation, and and those kind of things can definitely happen. But you're right if you have someone classified as say as a clerical employee, and then you know, they fall off the back of an 18 wheeler where you were rigging up the shipping on a piece of equipment you just built. People are going to have questions about, about why that clerical person was, was up on the, the truck. And, you know, when it comes to, you know, putting, you know, multiple different types of classifications on the policy, it gets more complicated in construction and, and agriculture because you can sometimes separate the payroll of an individual employee you know, depending on the work that they're doing, but, you know, getting into and really understanding how all of that works and how to make sure you're not overcharged is something that that's going to, you're going to need to have a, a strong agent to guide you through that because, you know, understanding this, even for an employer that really, really wants to understand how it works, there's not a ton of great resources in, in most states. The rules of the system are behind a paywall that you probably don't want or need to, you know, to pay to get behind. And, you know, that's, that's where the insurance agent becomes very, very important. And I also wanted to mention, cause you mentioned the, you know, the CPA or bookkeeper or tax professional that you work with, they are invaluable and often very good at what they do. I've had some experiences with folks that are We're not so good, but that's a whole different conversation. But if, if you have an outside bookkeeper handling your workers compensation premium audit, it's really important that you hook them up with your agent because what you do or don't pay taxes on has no bearing on what you do or don't pay workers compensation premium on. And we've seen a great number of times where those things got confused resulting in the employer paying more than they should on the comp, even if their taxes were perfect. Yeah, it's just keeping clean books and and the more information you can break down, you know, the better it'll be, not only for just ongoing businesses, but you know, if there's changes in legislation or coverage or or anything else, you're you're better prepared to navigate those changes unless you know, instead of just, you know, winging it and just paying what you pay. And it's, it always upsets me when companies are paying more than they need to. I'm sure, you know, a lot of the insurance companies are, are pleased with that. And, you know, it makes it easy for them. Just like anybody, it's like, oh, they're paying full price for it. Awesome. Great. 
but you know, don't pay more than you need to, you know, and don't cheat the system, but don't pay more than you need to. So that's exactly right. Every, every business owner has a place, whether it's, whether it's a hundred dollars or a hundred thousand dollars, you know, if you ask a business owner, if you had an extra hundred dollars, you know, where would you put that in your business? And the answer might be, you know, I'd go out to a nicer dinner on Friday night and that's fine. You're the business owner. You can spend that money however you want, but you never, you never want to pay more than, than you have to, which doesn't mean choosing the lowest price for your insurance is always the right decision because, you know, I've highlighted several times during our conversation, the importance of having the right agent and and agents that are not good don't by default have lower prices than the ones that are but but there's certainly you know a process of not only selecting the the best price but also you know the best person to partner with your business to make sure that you know everything is done correctly whether it's in workers compensation or all the other types of of insurance that businesses have to buy it's really important information and hopefully the audience will be on the phone with their agent to start asking them more questions on this. So I've loved this conversation. Where can people find out more about you and this awesome work that you're doing? Well, so you can learn more about the Institute at workcompprofessionals.com. And you could certainly, if you, if you listen to this and you have just a burning question, you can certainly pick up the phone, call me at 828 828- Two seven four zero nine five nine. You can also email me at Kevin at IWCPRO.com. We've also recently released our very first training program for employers to try and, and dig more in depth into how this system works from an employer's point of view. We talk an awful lot more about classifications and the, the audit, but also the experience modification factor, as well as how to prevent and manage employee injuries when they, Mm -hmm. when they happen, folks can find more about that at locked and loaded training.com. And there's also a link on workcompprofessionals.com. So if you go there first, there's a link on the homepage with that. That is a program that we built specifically for employers to give them the fundamentals that they need to better manage their, their program. That's awesome. And I'll definitely have that information in the show notes. So Kevin, thank you for this. I've learned a lot about uh, workers' compensation programs, a lot more than I thought I, I knew. So really appreciate your time today and, and sharing this valuable information for my audience. Really appreciate it. Well, it's, uh, it's been my pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks for listening to The Breakfast Leadership Show, part of The Breakfast Leadership Network. Visit breakfastleadership.com for tips on empowering your business and your life.